Hi, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of Dish with Pepper. I am here with one of the best basketball players on the planet and my dad's favorite player, Jew Lloyd, and I'm super excited um, to be joined by her and just to be able to catch up and see what's going on. Um, I want to start by saying that I won't be asking you about the storm in 2024 since this episode is happening before WNBA free agency and the draft. So there's a lot that will probably change before then, and hopefully maybe we can talk about that after. But I just wanted to start more um, focusing on you and what your offseason has been like. So let's start there. Offseason has been amazing. Um, honestly, it's been a nice to kind of regroup um, and kind of take a second to kind of get my body all healthy and ready to go coming into the season. Uh, we know with the Olympic season coming up, we've kind of been a little busy uh, with the qualification tournaments and camps, but I've allowed myself to find new hobbies um, and really just find some time to be fully myself and kind of be a normal person, which is always a pleasure. So uh, I have no complaints on this side. Yeah. Speaking of hobbies, how's Super Bowl going? It's going well. I played in a tournament uh, a month, a couple months ago now uh, out in uh, in Indiana, actually. And uh, for singles, I, I got second. And for, for doubles, we finished uh, fourth. So it's been fun. It's been really cool. It's, it's a total different atmosphere. People are super welcoming and they're great. So uh, it's been really cool to see just the development of the sport, but also uh, the ability to play with all my friends. Yeah, it's really cool to pick up like a sport um, as a professional athlete already. I think that's really awesome. I think being like a multi-sport athlete at any point is really important and really cool. Okay, so in addition to that, how is your preparation going specifically for the season in the Olympics? It's been great. I, I try not to do too much. Um, I try to add little things to my game or – um, different strategies to my approach to the game. Overall, it's been really good. Uh, I've been able to watch a lot of basketball. I've been able to watch myself, uh, challenge myself in other ways. I think a lot of it comes from just the, the leadership part um, and just getting to my, my mind going in a different way, thinking a little differently uh, how to approach the game. But overall, um, just making sure I'm staying in shape, make sure my body is able to do what my, what my brain wants it to do. Um, so that's really what's been happening is just really preparing to make sure I'm my best self every single time and I constantly just building on um, stuff from last year. When you go to the gym to work out or to shoot around, what are like your go-to drills that you have to do to start or finish any workout? Before any serious work can be done, it's always the fundamentals, right? I, I stand, you know, pretty close to the rim, do my form shooting, uh, make sure my touch around the rim, it's, it's, it's there, do my left hand, right hand. Um, nice little, you know, as I'm going through anything, I kind of make it as free as possible so it's not super structured. I want to make sure yeah. that I'm able to have creativity to my warm up, so that kind of gets me going a little bit, and then I break down into the normal five spot shooting, which seems probably very, you know, um, elementary, but that's like the base, the root of every every shot, you know. Um, so then I kind of go into that, and then I kind of let my trainers kind of challenge me in different ways, but it's always right away form shooting, little ball handling, get my body going, and then going to the the real uh, meat and potatoes of the, of the workout. Yeah, and that's really cool to hear because it's a lot very similar to, I think, what a lot of people, um, players at my age do as well. And that's, yeah, it's really cool to hear that you're doing something really similar. Okay. Um, I know that you were recently selected to be in the WNBA's Player Marketing Ar Agreement um, program. Can you just talk about what the program is and what your part of it is? Yeah, it's a great opportunity um, for players who are stateside to, one, grow their brand. Um, I think also help the, the league grow as well. Uh, I've been home for a couple of years now, and um, I, I thought it was a good idea for me to kind of give my face out to other people's other settings to learn uh, more from businesses, things like that. Um, you know, I, I really have a passion for diversification of my profile and the investments, things that I do beyond that. Um, but I definitely obviously have a passion for the league and trying to grow it as much as possible. I know that, you know, right now we're, we're still the, the pioneers of what's going to happen to the next generation. We're trying to make it better for them. And this is a way to kind of do that. And um, it's been really nice so far. It's really cool. And uh, I'm able to kind of do what I need to be doing, do what I want to do through the program as well. So it doesn't feel super taxing. Um, but overall, it's a pretty good experience. Yeah, speaking of giving back to the next generation, I know working um, with kids is really important to you. So can you talk about why taking part in programs like It's a Shot, which we both did together, um, are kind of really important to you? And one, is, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't really have a lot of programs. Um, that you can really go to um, or if you did you have to you know it was a privilege to do those things not everyone has access um, to a lot of resources so anytime that I'm able to kind of give back and share the resources that I'm able to have or 
uh, did have, it's, it just makes sense. And I also understand that I'm able to be here because um, someone helped me, right? Like it all started with someone giving me a basketball, right? Or someone allowing me to stay in the gym longer, all these things. And that the little helps it go along a long way. And um, you see that just the ability for us to be there and, and give them a vision um, or a dream to kind of build off of it. It just takes a kid from, you know, no hope to hope. And that's a really, really cool feeling to see and feel. Um, and that's like really something I'm totally passionate about. Yeah, and I love that. I think especially as someone who's inspired by players like you, um, it means so much when it's important for you like to be able to give back. And I know for like if I I was doing different work at Intershot, but I've definitely gone to clinics just like that and seeing like a WNBA player there meant everything. So um, it's from the other perspective, it's amazing to kind of have that opportunity. All right, switching gears a little bit. Um, we talked about being an Olympic year. I'm wondering if you have any fun stories or memories from your first Olympics. First Olympics, um, besides it being uh, COVID year for us and not having fan, fans or family there, uh, I felt a little eerie. Uh, at the same time, we literally leaned on each other so much. We were always in the player lounge playing. I never played so many games at Uno before. Um, I've never lost so many games at Uno before. <laughs> uh, we were, and that's honestly the best part. We were able to be with each other every single day, learn uh, each other, play Uno, play all these different games, kind of be a speed kid. It kind of felt like camp um, again where we're just – you know, we go and do all the hard work, come back, eat together, hang out together, um, and just listen to music. Uh, you know, every once in a while, Dame would freestyle, which was awesome, right? So we kind of, like, felt like high school kids again, which was, like, one of the reasons why a lot of us continue to play because we found that joy. And um, that made it super special since, you know, we were, like, kind of each other's families. What are you now most looking forward to about possibly playing in this Olympics? In a, in a weird way, I'm kind of looking forward to like the pressure of the fans, uh, mm -hmm. the pressure of hearing, you know, other countries, you know, cheer for you or cheer against you, the atmosphere um, that kind of gets you going. I'm, I'm kind of waiting to hear that because it's different, right? Like that's not the full experience. That's what makes, you know, games shift or athletes don't get nervous or not nervous. It's like the atmosphere. And that's such a big part of sports. And so, I'm kind of excited to feel that um, engagement from the crowd and feel the different energies for different games and just the energy around the city. You know, um, that's something that we missed in, in Tokyo. Like we didn't really interact with the the regular people um, or see things in the city. And I think Paris is going to be a cool spot to, to uh, witness that. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I mean, I've never been to Paris before, but from what I've seen, it looks like it's amazing. <laughs> like even just from a tourist standpoint, but playing there is going to be really cool. Um, yeah. I know you have a camp coming up soon too. What can you share about kind of the USA basketball process? Yeah, camp is, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of weird how our camps are just because it's super unique to only the U S players, how we break it up. Yeah. But, um, you know, the camps are cool because you're able to kind of take a moment out of, you know, your daily schedule and routine, uh, come together, see everyone that you haven't seen in a while, kind of get a, you know, a comfort of well, basketball and level is, but you also get to compete at a high level too so it's always nice to be around usa basketball and we do a good job of making sure we're taking care of the things that we need but now it's definitely a different level of competition because at the end of the day like only a certain amount of people can go so there is a, a, a reality of the, you're going to try your best and you're going to compete at the highest level because everyone wants to play for the olympics um but not everyone else has that chance so there's definitely a level of competition but it's definitely a level of just like being around the greatest players to play the game of basketball right it's really like the all-star team like everybody from who's <laughs> on the U.S. right being all together that's really cool um yeah. speaking of the Olympics and USA basketball obviously Sue Bird won't be able to play um for the 2024 team um you also played last season without Stu, Stu on the storm so what were kind of the lessons that you learned about leadership from playing with her that now you've kind of taken on um playing without her yeah it's, it's so weird to like think about basketball without Sue um, just the impact she's had on the league, the impact she's definitely had in Seattle. Uh, she literally has the key to the city and, and everyone's hearts out here in Seattle. So it's hard not to think, um, you know, they're separate. But I remember from like day, like the week one of camp um, of my rookie year, she always just said like, never get too high, never get too low. Just like maintain, you know, and, and being, you know, the, the leader of the team now, it's like there's things going to happen. There's things that I really can't control. We can't control. But if I'm, super high emotionally, I can't lock in and kind of gather the truths. If I'm super low and they need me to be at a higher level, um, I need to be able to do that. You know, they look to someone and look for 
you know, answers or just another bolts of just confidence. And so um, making sure that I'm always steady and consistent and really just always present. Uh, that's the biggest thing. You want to always look ahead. This is common for us to do that. But the moment I'm present, I'm able to feel and figure out what I need to do in that moment. And I'm not rushed with it. And that allows me to kind of be uh, the best leader of my abilities. Yeah. I know people say that they're like vocal leaders and like watch and learn kind of leaders. And it seems like it's important to have sort of a balance. So whatever the team needs, you're able to do. And that's really cool. All right. Last question, kind of turning gears again. I would love to just hear your thoughts on the state of women's basketball, the college season going on right now. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, basketball in general is in a great spot. Um, I'm obviously women's basketball right now. It's, it's, um, it's a different look, it's a different feel. Uh, some of that's from NIL. Some of that's just from women just coming in ready. Uh, I think the ability for a lot of these women to come in and train um, and have that mindset to want to get better and not just suddenly for, oh, like, I'll just, you know, be just average and be okay with that. I think there's a level of, like, I want to be good at my sport. I want to help my team win. And you see that. Um, you know, I think just the skill level is just phenomenal. Uh, there's a little – the game's faster. People are scoring way more points, which is fun to watch for fans and obviously fun to play in. And I actually had a conversation with my dad the other day. He's like, you know, a lot of these – because people are just so good. It's like every game you watch, it's just turning into a pickup game. It's a, it's a, it's a you know, a regulated pickup game. And the pressure of, like, having to be a certain way is not there anymore. It's just go out there and play, which is nice and fun. And, um, you know, you obviously see the scoring of, you know, Caitlin Clark, you know, Juju. Like, you see all these great players, and it's like – you know, that wasn't always the case. Like, not everyone was coming in as freshmen doing step backs and shooting long threes and, you know, having these Kyrie finishes, right? It just wasn't a thing. It was just, like, play it safe and just try to get out, you know, and just try to win. And so um, I'm excited because that's a new wave of athletes coming in. It's a new wave of, you know, mindset. They're not coming in scared. They're, you know, they're trying to take our jobs. We feel like we all understand. We know it. Um, but it's cool to see, and I think it's just going to continue to grow. Yeah, what I love about the fact that college basketball has grown so much, it means that everything continues to grow. And like what you said about them coming in ready means like from the middle school and then high school means they're getting better at all levels, which means all aspects of the game are growing, which means so will the WNBA too, which I think is really cool that, you know, one aspect grows, everybody grows in terms of women's basketball. And I love that. All right. We kind of covered a lot in a short amount of time, but <laughs> thank you for – um sharing everything so excited to be able to watch you play soon um the olympics and the w um and thank you for your time today of course anything for you you're the you're the future so uh keep doing what you're doing it's awesome thank you so much i really appreciate it as always everybody can find me on instagram at pepper Pursley and on tiktok at pepper Pursley. thank you all for listening um and for tuning in